Welcome to how to use JavaScript modules in AL. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, when it comes to JavaScript, there are like two different, uh, two different flavors. Uh, there's the old fashioned where everything happens in, 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 the, in the global scope. You define stuff in JavaScript and it's available everywhere. And then there's the slightly more organized way of defining something and putting it in as a module. Uh, in Business Central, we like the first part. We do not really like the second part for some reason. Um, um, let me show you how all this uh, played out for me the, uh, the other day when I was working on adding in, I think there was a video on that, adding in the agent experience in, in one of my apps. And uh, I didn't want to go through all the hoops of um, of building a UI for, for chatting with an agent. So uh, so I looked at open source solutions and I came across a deep chat uh, and um, it was nice. So uh, I went with that. And uh, a deep chat is open source, you know, there's a GitHub repo, it's MIT license, it's actively uh, maintained and so on. And there are great examples of how to do this. Um, so I thought, huh, let's, let's try that. So, so let's try that here now. Um, and we can see there, there's like a JavaScript bundle thing here, and then you just insert the control and you're off to the races. Um, so we could, of course, just use the the external URL here, but we could also grab it. Uh, and I think I'm going to grab it because then we have full control and we know that the version we're running is useful. I've just started a, uh, a new app here, created an empty page, and let's create a our deep chat and then we'll take what I have in deep chat.js and put all the stuff in there. So now we have the thing. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's get this thing onto a page inside business central. How hard can it be? Uh, we create a new page deep chat is it one or two words deep chat test um and let's page type you know there's this new page type wow wow call user control host we call deep chat demo always remember on application area um now it gets mad at me because why because I do not have a user control yet. So let's add layout area. There's only content on this type of page. And we add a user control, deep chat, and then we need a user control. So let's create a user control. I've already had the content, right? We have the JavaScript. So let's quickly create this one. I'll call it deep chat.al. And you will think that you will now create a user control, but that would be too easy. No, you can create a create a control add in deep chat. Um, and there's kind of three sections to a user control add in. There's there's like the, you got you got your includes, you got your uh, your properties, uh, and you got your your interface. Um, so. Clearly we have already, I'm pointing at the screen, right? Right there, there's something. Uh, we have the, a script, so we'll do scripts equal deep chat, and it's in a folder, so we have to put the folder in, uh, in the path also, deep chat.js. Um, and then we need, so we need, for user control to do anything else, we, we probably need two more files. Uh, 
So one file would be a, a startup case uh, JavaScript and one file would be a just where we, we add our functionality. Um, so we can go back to this one and say that we have also a script called so we just do comma deep chat slash script.js and we have the startup script called deep chat slash startup.js okay properties uh, the most important properties right now is, is sizing and the easiest ways to do this is uh, to allow vertical stretch and horizontal stretch i think there's at least two videos on on how to resize these things because you get some weird sizes out of microsoft that the default is 100 dash times 100 and sometimes they will only occupy half the screen it it's weird um okay so interface what do we need to interface? Well, an interface is how we communicate with the, the control and how the control communicates with us. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an event. An event is the control telling us something. And every control needs to do at least one thing and that is telling us when it's ready. Because otherwise, if we start calling into the control before it's ready, then it simply doesn't work. So you always wanna add a control ready uh, event um, and then we probably need to add a a procedure just to call into it uh, and and do something so that is pretty good so now already at this point we can go back to our test page here and uh, and we now can add the deep chat to this thing we can uh, say there's a trigger and the trigger is the control ready one we just created and when the control is ready let's do cur page dot deep chat dot in it which is well which is the function we just defined here so now you can see there's one reference for each of these of course right now none of those are doing anything useful because we have not wired them up on the JavaScript side. So let's start wiring the uh, the event. So here's the startup script. So the startup is executed when the control is, is started. Um, so we want, in here we want to call the control ready uh, thing. So I do microsoft.dynamics.nav dot invoke extensibility method. Um, and the method we want to invoke is uh, control ready. And there are no parameters, otherwise you can add a an array with parameter values. So this thing calls this thing that will eventually trigger the, this this guy. So we call back to the init function, and the init function we declare in our in our script so here's the init function um, and maybe let's actually just see if we got so we're going to control do hello no let's do an alert instead alert hello youtube right. just to see that we have all the internal wiring linked up now so i'll hit a five I will log in. Hello YouTube. Okay, so so we are we are wired. That's pretty good. Hey, first try. That uh, that never happens. So repeat. We got our control. We got our page hosting. Our control. We got our thing. Our thing and our thing. So our the deep chat from from the deep chat website our script with any function and our startup thing. So now the only thing we need to do here is basically put the control on the page. So a control add-in, the way it works is that 
I see we got the guy that's still oh, I removed closed it. So you get the the iframe on the page and in the iframe Microsoft places a div. And the div is called control that in. So we can we, we can say container equal document dot get element by ID and the element is control add in capital A and capital I lowercase C. Um so now we have that div. And the only thing that I think we need to do in order for us to close this video early and declare success is grab the demo code here. Uh, and then we can do container.inner HTML equal. And if I do the this one, I can get a multi-line comment. Oh, not on text ring actually. And Bob's your uncle. We're done. We are done. We are not done. Clearly, something. Oh, so let's. So here. Our problem start. Unexpected token export failed to execute right on document. Unexpected token export. Hmm. Okay. Uh, remember the, the the title of the video. This is uh, this is the problem we want to solve. And if we go back to not this guy but this one. We saw, if I can get this to zoom, I cannot. So we saw that, hey, the script here is defined type module. Um, so the challenge is that we need to tell our friend here that this guy is a module. Um, but we don't have modules and and there is there is there is no 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 thing so this one doesn't work so let's get rid of that so how do we include a module when we're not allowed to define the script as a module um, and here's the trick i have come up with there might be other solutions and if you have another solution uh, you no know, comments below and all that good stuff. So what I did was that there is another way we can define an image. And clearly a piece of JavaScript is not an image. But who cares? Uh, apparently not uh, this tag because images is sort of just... Oh, sorry. Images is... Um, just a resource. So, so think of it that resources equal this thing. And now what we can do is that we have to go back to our startup page here. I happen to leave some lines blank. So why don't we use the blank lines? Um, we can do an import. So that's a dynamic load of a module. Um, and we know the module is, is this, but that is not enough, right? So we can do Microsoft.dynamics.nav.get image resource. Oh, not call. Wow. Get image resource. And that's the name of the resource. Uh, so now we're importing this as a module. We're importing it dynamically, but we're still importing it. Um, let's hit a, hit a file and see how. Welcome to the demo. So now we loaded a, a JavaScript module um, in a user control. Um, so mission accomplished. Let's just uh, let's just repeat. So we have a page we added in the control. The control is defined as a normal control. There's an interface. There's some properties. There's our own script. So the script that holds the init function and the startup script, 
and then we have included the JavaScript module as an image. Um, and in the style script, I have simply said, let's import that image as a JavaScript module. And this happened to be a JavaScript module. Boop, Bob's your uncle. We have a chat interface on the screen. I think Microsoft should actually uh, uh, officially uh, extend the, the, the control at end definition so you can say that something is a module uh, or, or not. But until then, this seems to be a, a workable hack. Um, so I hope that helped. Uh, check out this video. Uh, there's more ale hacking going on in here. Probably just as epic. Check it out. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.